gentlemen, presenting the silver tongue prince of the courtroom, the one, the only, Mr. Billy Flynn. He said his daughter went to hell ten years ago. 
She could stay there forever and let her rot before he'd spend a cent to get her out. Isn't that what he said? That's what he said, Mr. Flynn. But she's my wife, Mr. Flynn. Look, I'll do whatever it takes to help get her out, out of jail. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you $20 a week off my salary. How does that sound? I'll, I'll, I'll even give you notes with interest, double, triple even. How does that sound, Mr. Flynn? I'll do whatever it takes, anything, just to help Roxy out. I promise you. I promise you. You know, that's <laughs> touching. <laughs> care for a woman that much, true. Really. It's very, very touching. But I have a motto, and that motto is this. Play square. Dead square. <laughs> Sit down. Now, when you came in here yesterday, I didn't ask you if she was guilty. I didn't ask you if she was innocent. I didn't ask you if she was a drunk or a dope fiend. No foolish questions like that, now did I? No. All I said was, do you have $5,000? And you said yes. But you haven't got $5,000, so I figured you're a dirty liar. Sorry, Mr. Flynn. But I took her case. And I'll keep it, because I play square. Now look, Hart, I'm not a braggart. I don't like to blow my own horn, but believe me, if Jesus Christ had lived in Chicago today, <coughs> And he'd had five thousand dollars, and he'd come to me. Well, things would have turned out differently. <laughs> All right, here's what we're gonna do. First thing tomorrow, we'll get her name on the front page of every newspaper in town. She'll be a celebrity, hottest little jazz slayer since Belle McKellen. Then, once we make her famous, we'll announce that we're going to hold an auction to raise money for her defense. They'll buy everything she's ever touched: her shoes, her dresses, her perfume, her underwear. Plus, if by due process of the law she gets hanged, hanged, we tell them the stuff triples in value. And that's how he raised the rest of the $5,000. I'll give you 20% off the top of everything we make over that, and that's what I call playing square. I don't think so, Mr. Flynn. I don't figure you've got a choice. See, it's like this. Either I get the entire $5,000, or... You rot in jail before I can ever bring you to trial. Rot in jail? You don't really mean that, do you? I certainly do. Look, Mr. Flynn, I've never been very good at this sort of thing. I've always had a great deal of trouble expressing myself, but couldn't we possibly make some sort of arrangement between us? I could be an awfully good sport. Hey, you mean one thing to me. Five thousand dollars, and that's all. Get it? Now, in a few minutes, we're going to have a big press conference in here. The whole place will be full of reporters and photographers. And that sob sister from the Evening Star is coming. I don't figure we'll have any trouble out of her, though. She'll swallow a hook, line, and sink her, because it's what she wants. Her name is Mary Sunshine.
nothing rougher than, oh dear, got it? Yes, sir. Sit down. Now, first thing we have to do is get the sympathy from the press. They're not all pushovers like that Mary Sunshine. Chicago's a tough town. It's gotten so tough, they shoot the girls right out from under. But if there's one thing they can never resist, it's a reformed sinner. So we're going to rewrite the story of your life. It'll run tomorrow morning in the Star. From convent to jail. Convent? Oh, Mr. Flynn, I'll never believe that. <laughs> oh, no. Get this. Beautiful southern home. Every luxury and refinement. Parents, dead. Fortune swept away, educated at the sacred heart. A runaway marriage. A young, innocent young girl, bewildered by what's happened to her. Young, full of life. Lonely. You were caught up in the mad world of a great city. Jacks, cabaret, liquor. Sit down. <laughs> a mob drawn to a flame. But now, the mad world has ceased. A butterfly crushed on the wheel. You have sinned, and you are sorry. God, that's beautiful! Cut out God, too. Stay where you're better acquainted. <laughs> the thing to remember when the press gets here is remorse, regret, and your sorrow. Sorrow. You'd give your life and gladly to bring him back. Now, when they ask why you shot him, all you can recall is a fearsome quarrel, and he threatened to kill you. You can still see him coming at you with that awful look in his eyes, and then, get this, you both reached for the gun. That's your prize, self-defense. Mr. Flynn, the reporters are here? Let him in, Butch. Now listen. <laughs> Let's regret and you both reached for the gun. Ladies and gentlemen, who this? Sunshine. Always happy to see members of the press. You know my client, Miss Roxy Hart. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so flattered, y'all. <laughs> hey, see me? I guess you want to know why I shot the bastards. Sit down, dummy. <laughs> Mr. Flynn sings the press conference rag. Notice how his mouth never moves. Almost. Where'd you come from, Mississippi? And your parents were sick and wealthy. Where are they now, sixty under? She was granted one more start. The comic of the city talk. When'd you get here, 1920? How old were you? Don't remember. She had none. And yet we both reach for the gun. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, we both, oh yes, we both, oh yes, we both reach for the gun, the gun, the gun, the gun. Oh yes, we both reach for the gun, for the gun. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, we both, oh yes, we both, oh yes, we both reach for the gun, the gun, the gun, the gun. Oh yes, we both reach for the gun, for the gun. Understandable, understandable. Yes, it's perfectly understandable. Reprehensible, it's so 